Hello, Miss Dow here. I'm back with another project for us all to try and hopefully you will all again send pictures. Um, maybe more participate this time. I would love to have everyone participate um, in this project. So I have created two projects and it's weaving. Okay, this is a project we would do at school if we were there. Um, however, I'm putting, this one's not quite done yet because I'm gonna use this one for demonstration. Um, but I have paper weaving as well as yarn weaving, okay? And I have pre-taken pictures. Um, so some of this I will demonstrate and some of it I will try to speed up by showing you pictures and try to keep this video as short as possible. Um, I did put in a PowerPoint, so that should make it easier for you to um, skip around um, based on what you might need to watch or rewatch. Oops, it's not letting me move that. There we go. All right, so this is to celebrate Black History Month. All right, and two purposes I would like to come from this. I thought about it a lot um, and I've talked with some other colleagues and to get ideas and really wanted to make sure that um, that I, I put this together in, in, a, in a safe manner for everybody. So that's purpose number one. I want it to be a safe space for everyone to express their support for Black lives through art. That's first and foremost. And the second thing is I would like it to result in an action step. I would love for everyone to be able to take an action step to promote one of, at least one of, I should say, Black Lives Matter 13 guiding principles. And I didn't list them all here, but you can go to the website and look at them. Um, I support them all, but I feel like we're sort of justice, empathy, loving engagement, diversity, and collective value are the ones that relate to this project the most. All right, collective value, loving engagement. Okay, um, I chose weaving exactly for that, that collective, um, the collective piece, because the symbolism behind weaving is that you weave all these different colors together and they become stronger together, but you don't lose the individual strands, right? Each piece is still an individual strand. If you wanted to, you could separate the weaving and have your original pieces. Um, whereas if you were doing painting, the symbolism is you become a, you, you, you mix colors and get a whole new color. You can't then separate them back into the original colors. And I really like the symbolism on that for uh, talking about culture. Um, weaving goes back, as you can see, 28,000 years, um, long before all of our cultures <clears throat> were established. So I, I really am confident that that's a safe place for us to all get together and kind of create our own um, uh, celebration of um, where we are right now. So I quickly wanted to talk a little bit about inspiration versus authenticity. Um, I wanna be very careful in saying I am not creating this project in the sense that it's an authentic African-American project. Um, I am inspired by, it is, the project is inspired um, through some African-American cultural pieces. Uh, for example, Faith Ringgold and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. because of his I Had a Dream. I think a lot of us are inspired by that. Um, I'm very inspired by that because I connect with it in so many ways. I have a very deep faith. Um, so it connects with me there. It comes from a, a deep, deep position of love. And I think that's super important. And I think that that's also a safe place for us to meet. It's a common ground for everybody. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody loves uh, someone else. So um, I think that's a good place for us to be. Um, but his dream is not a dream that just one person or even one culture can achieve on their own. So there comes that collective piece again. Right, and to do that, you have to build empathy. Um, so you have to have a common ground to come together um, to start learning about each other. And you can learn about somebody's culture and still maintain your own, 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> Par Beach, Faith Ringgold. I love Faith Ringgold. I had a chance to meet her um, several years ago. And uh, gosh, I just love her. I won't go into all that because I'm trying to keep this video short, but, but that's my inspiration. When I was little, um, you know, as a white person growing up in America with, with roots that go back all over Europe, you know, I'm, I'm English, I'm, I'm Swedish, I'm Irish, French, you know, I've got this mix, but that was all lost. Okay. So growing up, I was around so many different, um, first generation cultures. And I was always like, so in awe of that beautiful culture, the traditions that they had. Uh, one thing I'll share is my uh, mother, I was probably about four years old. We used to go next door to this Italian lady's name. Uh, she was Mary was her name. And she showed my mother how to make from scratch, authentic Italian sauce. And my mother would make it. It would just, it would cook and simmer all day long. Oh, the aroma was heavenly. So she, my mother, of course, has taught this to me. And just because I know that I would never say, I could open up an authentic Italian restaurant, right? I'm not even Italian. It, it, with all my different roots, I'm not Italian. Um, that would be offensive, <laughs> right? Um, but I certainly I can say I'm inspired by that Italian food, okay? So let's, I just wanted to make sure that was clear and um, before we started, because I think that's important so that make sure that we are respecting um, everybody's cultures. So let's get started. Okay. So again, we're going to have paper weaving uh, or yarn weaving. Paper weaving, I tend to do with the younger, like kindergarten, first grade as an introduction. It really depends on their experience. Okay. If you're, if you're, if you have a kindergarten or first grader and they have excellent finger dexterity and control, then you might want to try weaving with them with yarn. Um, I know other teachers who do it. Um, I just find at our school, we have too many kids who, um, who, who haven't been practicing um, with their fingers. So I just start with paper and that seems to be good for everybody. Um, look around the house, find some things that you can use. We're gonna use, I use a cereal box for my frames um, and some paper. You're just gonna need basic materials, scissors, glue. Um, I did use some paint, but you can just use crayons or markers, okay? All right, so to make your frame, it can be circular, it can be a square, as you saw in the examples I gave you. So I'm not gonna demonstrate how to do that. Um, I will, however, just quickly, without changing my screen, um, if you can see my little picture here, to cut out the center. Boys and girls, I'm talking to you in particular. I feel like adults, you probably know to do this, but my students who don't know how to do this, to get to the center without cutting through your circle, you're gonna kind of fold it. I already kind of started this one. You're gonna pinch it, okay? You're just gonna pinch. Don't crease the whole thing. You don't want that crease to be there. And use your scissors to just cut a little cut right there to make a hole. Then when you open it, you can just, you have that cut where you can start cutting around and out to your circle, okay? All right, hopefully that's um, enough of an explanation. I'm trying to make this video short. I actually made it once already and it was too long. All right, so first your frame. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to do the decoration. Um, I won't go through all this. Obviously, you can do any decoration you want. I suggest you do a little research on Google. Um, find some African-American or African patterns. I found this pattern. It's a very traditional pattern. They're not quite the bright colors that you would see with African-American traditional colors. They have the black, the green, the red, the yellow, or gold, because I was using construction paper crayons because I painted my frames black first. Um, I was making so many different demonstration pieces. I didn't, the thought of coloring all those with crayon and arthritis in my hands, I was like, no way. So painting it was easier for me. And then I had those crayons to, to go on top. If you use 
construction paper crayons, y'all, they sell those in the stores everywhere. Okay, Crayola stuff is everywhere and I highly recommend it. The colors are brighter. Um, you can't beat those. Um, if you go to some of the generic brands, you're not gonna get the color, you're just not. Um, Black Lives Matter, their resources suggest you also can use universal symbols such as hearts, given that it's the month of February and that Martin Luther King Jr.'s doctor, excuse me, Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, message comes from the heart. I felt like a heart was very appropriate. So I did make one demonstration piece with hearts. All right, so let's start with the paper weaving. The first thing you're gonna do is cut strips of paper. Okay, if you have color paper, construction paper, or if you want to, you could color white paper with a crayon, the different colors that you would like. And then you need to glue them to the back side of your frame. Okay, mine started to curl a little bit. Paper does that anytime you put glue or paint on it because it's wetting the paper, right? And it's gonna wanna curl. So put something on it um, to hold it down. I don't recommend you put something over where the glue is. You don't want it to stick to it, okay? Let it dry completely. While that was doing that, I actually went in, I'm gonna skip ahead. Uh, yeah, no, right here. I actually went and cut up my extra strips into little tiny strips to make a pattern for the border um, as a collage. So you can always do collage for your, your border as well. Cut out any shapes you want. There's no limit to what you can do with this. So just because I'm showing you one thing in particular does not mean that you can't alter it and do something different. So I'm gonna demonstrate weaving. Um, I feel I've taught this at Lakewood before. So if you are a student of mine, this should be a quick review for you, except for of course my first graders or any students that are new this year, okay? The key to remember is alternating. And we just started talking about patterns and alternating. So you know that means opposite, A, B, A, B. Or in weaving, we're doing over, under, over, under, okay? This is the thing, the place where everyone that gets, that's going to get confused gets confused. This green one was under the red, okay? You see how it started under the red? That means my next row has to go over the red first, okay? I cannot do the under because then it doesn't lock in place um, and build that strength. It would actually just keep sliding around, okay? So if I'm under, I'm gonna go over and then under the yellow. So it's opposite, see? So not only are you doing A, B, A, B this way, which is the weft, like left, left to right, you're also doing alternating pattern up this way, all right? So if I link this together, if I push them all together, which you can do, or you can leave a space, I can put them all together. Because this is not a functional piece, um, you don't have to leave a space. If it was a functional piece, like a basket, I wouldn't suggest leaving an empty space. But for, for looks, aesthetics, you could leave, depending on where you're gonna put this um, and what you're gonna see through those little cracks, um, you can leave spaces, okay? And then of course the back, you have some of these pieces sticking out as well. Um, so if you, if you don't like these pieces sticking out in the front here, you can always tuck them underneath completely optional again. I'm creating a pattern. I'm doing all my colors in order. I'm going red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green, and I'm doing that with everything. I'm being consistent. So if this one's over, again, we're going to start under. That is the key. And then go over, under, over, under through the whole thing. And of course, you can create a pattern. Um, you don't have to do it just this way. You can Oh gosh, there's so many um, ways that you can create patterns with weaving. You could do it something like what I did with the yarn where you did all one color together. You could do a shorter version and make it, um, oh, can you see the yellow and the green? Okay, I could do, I could have made that smaller. 
so I repeated it more often, okay? There's all kinds of combinations that you can do with that pattern, okay? All right, so that is paper weaving. And remember, you are welcome to contact me if you have any questions. I try to do this with still frames so that you could just pause the video um, and, and look at the picture. And I think that you could get most of this from looking at the pictures. All right, yarn weaving. To get started, you have to create the warp, uh, which is this part, the yellow string that's going up and down, all right? Um, you want to be careful not to pull it too tight. And in the back, you're going to tie it. All right. So I will demonstrate this real quick. I keep switching. All right. So here is my, my heart one that I did. All right, so I've already started it. Here's my starting point, my string in the back. I went up through the hole, so it came out here, and I went down across. Now, then, as I went down, I went through the hole right next to it. You don't want to go back and forth from one hole to the next. If you go up through one hole, you want to go down the one right next to it before you return to the other side. The reason why is because it keeps those lines parallel. You'll see that if you don't do that and you just like your sewing going back and forth, they're gonna overlap each other. Um, and they're gonna, it's like at an angle, it's not gonna look right, all right? So if you do it this way where you have these little holes, you have to go in and out the holes next to each other before you head back to keep those parallel, all right? And so real quick, I'll demonstrate it. I'm coming up, I came up through this hole. I had already gone into the next hole. So um, I'm gonna go down into this one across, across and down, I should say, All right? So now I'm gonna come up through that hole next to it. I'm gonna come up through this one, All right? I'll pull it. Now I can go back down to this side. If it frays like that, you just twist it. Put it through, and then again, up, pull, and now you can go back into the last hole. All right, now, you want to pull these tight, but not so tight that you pull or warp the board, all right? You're creating the warp, the warp rather, you don't wanna warp the board. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, I wonder if that's why they came up with that. Um, sometimes I find it's good to put something heavy on here. So it's kind of like tightening your shoelaces on your, your shoes, okay? So kind of hold this tight and then just kind of pull the strings like you would on your shoes. Your pair of sneakers, you know, they get kind of, um, you stretch them out a little bit after you've worn them for a few times. All right, but again, not so tight that it starts to pull the board. All right, and then you're just gonna tie the two ends together. It may crisscross, um, go diagonal. It may be uh, in line down here. It depends on how many holes you punched in it, if you made them equal or not. Okay. All right, and then of course you can cut those extra strings off. Not too close because no matter how tight you do it, it tends to come undone, okay? <clears throat> now you can start the weft, which I think weft left and right. So I have light pink here. Um, you are going to do the same thing over, under, over, under. Now the thing that, um, again, that is often the most difficult for kids to remember is alternating each row, okay? Now, this little end, only on this first string, you can, 
You won't do it quite like this on the others. You can put it through one of the holes, or if it doesn't look right, you can <clears throat> put it underneath. And to hold it still, you can tie it. Um, here, I'm gonna move to this side. You can tie it to this string that you, where you tied off. Get my hands on the way so you can see where you tied it off. Okay. Um, you don't have to tie it. This is just to keep it still for, especially for little hands. Okay. All right. Now, one of the things that you have to also keep in mind with weaving with yarn is again, not to pull it too tight because what starts to happen is you pull it too tight, you create an hourglass effect. And then you have to, it, it's a lot to go back and undo it. So if I'm under here, I'm gonna go over the first one. So the difference also with, with yarn is that you go back and forth, back and forth with the same piece of yarn. Whereas with paper, you just have one row at a time, one piece of paper at a time. Okay, so I put my finger here, do you notice that? And then I pulled this through tight, so it's straight, but then let go, then let go with this finger. And then you can push the yarn close together. Okay, I'll do that one more time. And then you can rewind the video if you need to. So if that's under, you're gonna go over it first, under, over, under, all the way across. Make sure you don't miss one. Boys and girls, go slowly. This is one of the, ends up being one of the quietest projects at school because they get into it and it's just so relaxing and hypnotizing. So remember I held it, hold it tight, let go, and then let go and tuck the ribbon or the, the string down, okay? Now you're gonna keep going until your string ends or you've had enough of that color. When you finish that color, leave a little bit sticking out, okay? And then I'll show you in a picture. You leave that little bit sticking out. We did that, we tied it. So you leave a little bit sticking out and then you match it starting the next color. So you leave a little bit sticking and uh, sticking out and then you continue same way. So if I, you can see the pink ended under, so the yellow goes over, all right? And then you just continue weaving as if that string never ended, okay? Every time you start and stop a color, you do the same thing. Leave a piece sticking out, start the next one and pull it through so that you leave a piece next to it but make sure you start the opposite, all right? And then when you're done, so the last piece, you can tie it the same way you did that first piece. And then the ones that are sticking out, those side pieces, when you started and stopped the colors in between, you kind of flip them to the back side and just tie them in the back, okay? Not rocket science there, okay? You just don't want to see the knots. Okay, and then it's done. When you flip it over, you can't see any of the knots. That is yarn and paper weaving. I hope that you will enjoy this. Uh, moms and dads, like I said, this is one of those projects at school when we do with yarn. The kids love it. It's calming. They're calm. Um, I usually save it for the springtime and towards the end of the school year when everyone's a little bit tired and uh, they, they want to work on it. Like they'll come see me when they have downtime in their class and say, can I work on my weaving? And the teacher was like, can you just let them come weave or in our class and I'll give them yarn and let them weave in the class and they're so quiet. So if you're looking for something for them to do um, to help them be calm, they will love this. Just help them get started. And don't forget an action step, okay? Don't forget your action step. Remember the whole purpose of this is to create conversation. You're creating a safe place for everyone to talk about what's really happening. Let's talk about the truth, okay? Let's talk about truth. I'm 48 years old. A lot of what I was taught was a lie in my, in my, my history classes, okay? Not all of it, of course. Not all of it was wrong or all of it was bad. Um, but the last four years, we've seen a lot. 
things aren't really the way that we want them to be. Okay, we want um, justice for everybody, equality for everybody. I've always said that we are all born equal, but we are not born into equality. So let's all work together. Let's open that conversation and have safe conversations with each other and then commit to taking an action step to help uh, each other um, make this world a better place. Let's achieve the dream together.